started. Um, first, I want to kind of just start off by uh, thanking uh, Lee and Hayes, which is a large intellectual property uh, law firm based here in Spokane, but with basically a worldwide presence. Um, they are the sponsors of Ignite Talks. So thank you, Lee and Hayes and Richard Denany and the whole team over there. Um, but today we're, uh, we're featuring Bjorn Wolterman, who is uh, CEO and founder of Catalyst Fit. And uh, I met uh, Bjorn, I don't know, a couple of months ago and uh, became uh, enthralled with uh, his company and him and his background and the product um, and thought he would be a perfect candidate for our Ignite Talks um, series and he agreed so we're, we're very fortunate he did that. So today will be you know our traditional interview format uh, but I certainly want to encourage uh, questions from everybody on the phone here today. And, and really the best way that works is if uh, you could submit your question to me and then I will call on you. But it is kind of mo most uh, informative if uh, it can be interactive. So uh, don't be shy with the question. And really we're gonna kind of, you know, kind of start here to get an understanding of, uh, of uh, Bjorn's background and what prompted him to start the company. And then we'll go into, you know, what his product is and, and the features and the market and all those sort of things. But I am just going to kick off with really, you know, uh, the, the, the general question, you know, what was your background prior to starting Catalyst? Thank you, Tom. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, and uh, a very quick uh, note on that. We actually work with Lee Hayes quite a bit. So we have like, you know, 11 pieces of IP that I, that I wrote. And uh, I have to say it was a very um it's it's always a very good experience with those guys and uh you know i just found it quite uh interesting when i saw like you know the the talk is uh sponsored by lee hayes i'm like yeah like which we, we work with them since like two years and uh um it's always been fun so i thought the world is a is a small place Fantastic. we love you bjorn and richard's on the phone here hello richard hi oh. thanks Tom. thank you bjorn awesome yeah no it's um yeah, it's it's very cool, and maybe we should have a conversation like you know uh, another time because uh, you know I, I really I really would love to. No, so um, the background. Um, so I'm born and raised in Germany, um, and uh, I'm an economist by trade. Um, actually, uh, uh, love to do like game theory, which is like kind of like you know what my specialty is. So. You know how do negotiations work and you know, how do certain outcomes and certain uh, constellations of like you know parties basically play out and um you know during um the 2000s i was part of a group called scout 24 which is kind of like the trulia and zillow and cast.com of europe so to say so all these like you know platforms and when the internet basically grew and exploded you know we were part of that um over in europe and then um, a few years um forward uh, we got acquired by um, Europe's largest telco called Deutsche Telekom, which is kind of like the AT&T and Verizon combined um, of, of our country. And I said, like, I'm not going to work for a telco. Um, sorry, like, it's not my, not my uh, type of game. Um, however, you know, I ended up um, joining them because they were asking, can you help us? And it was kind of like the, the game of all large companies in the late 2000s you know, can you help us understand how we as the big company can work with small companies and can be innovative and, you know, can bring in new um, technologies and, you know, refresh our culture and so on and so forth. And I said, I'm going to give it a try. And um, the, the interesting aspect of that time was like, we gave ourselves a, a mission statement as a team saying, we are the ones who have to dance, uh, teach the elephant how to dance with mice. Um, this was kind of like our um, our mission statement back in the days. Um, learned a lot, um, and it was an interesting time. But it was always clear to me that I want to go back into a more, you know, edgy, um, bleeding edge startup entrepreneurial world. And I was looking for a, um, yeah, for a new mission, um, and uh, that ultimately led me to um, starting Catalyst. So building ecosystems and, you know, making sure that different parties in a transaction actually get what they need and what they want and, you know, is, is very important. So when you're building um, 
a platform or if you're building a product, you know, how do you have everybody aligned so that you don't have to create rules around that to get them a certain place, but they are actually incentivized to do what you want them to do, which is kind of like their ultimate outcome. And that's what I've been doing before. And technically I'm doing still that. Okay, so you so you work for a very large company, mm -hmm. and uh, but then you went off to start a brand new entity. Um, so what what inspired you to to make the leap and uh, and, and to start Catalyst? And, and and how long have you been working on Catalyst? So I've been so I left Deutsche Telekom in early 2015. Um, so I'm basically like six years on the journey now. Um, in 2012, um, at the height of, you know, what we were doing over there, um, I was working with teams in 15 different countries, um, which led to 160 flights, 155 flights a year, um, which my lower back didn't really like, um, and totally blew up. So at 35, I got a diagnosis of like, you're either going to work out significantly, or you're going to end up with a herniated disc, or you're going to stop flying. And I'm like, I can't stop flying and I'm not going to quit my job. So my physician actually sent me um, to one of these places that offered full body muscle stimulation training. Um, that was in 2012. Um, for context, at that point in time, this type of training already had about 500 studios in Germany. Um, still today in America, it's pretty much nascent and unknown. And we can get to that a little bit later. But I... Um, basically was sent my, by my physician to this type of training. And he said, you know, try it. I go there twice a week. It's awesome. And uh, it's totally going to fix your back. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. And then he said, and it's only 20 minutes. And I said, okay, now you lost me because this is one of these infomercials that, you know, I don't believe in and so on and so forth, but I still went. So I went, um, did one of these workouts um, and we can talk about this a little bit later, but basically you're sitting in a, or you're standing in a suit um, and the suit helps you to, you know, activate basically all your muscle fibers in your body while you're going through non-impact basic calisthenic movements. And I looked through this window and there were like a 62 year old female and a 35 year old male doing the side by side with a personal trainer. They were like having nothing in their hands. They were just like moving like this and they were like, dripping and sweating like crazy. And I said, like, what I'm seeing here makes no sense to me because like, they're not really moving. They're not really doing anything hard. And like, it seems to be very hard. So I have to try this. So I did a session was like sweating like hell was like, you know, really intense workout. And I was like, wow, this was like surprising. Um, you really have an endorphin rush afterwards. I was like super excited about it. Two days later, I was so sore. I could like, you know, hardly get off the toilet. I say, I have to say this this way, um, but it was literally true. And I gave it a shot. Um, I went there every Monday, 6 p.m. for six weeks. And I ended up one Sunday morning telling my wife when I woke up in the morning, I didn't take a painkiller in a week, which hasn't happened for years. And I get out of bed without being in pain. Like, this is interesting. So six weeks, once a week, solved my problem. So my physician was right. Um, very quickly, uh, same year, we were traveling California, we we're sitting with friends in LA at a barbecue. And the ladies were starting to talk about fitness. And they said, Hey, we do this thing, and so on and so forth. I overheard the conversation and everybody else in the group was saying, like, what are you talking about? And for me as a European, it's like new fitness things come from America. You guys invent this stuff, right? You guys invent SoulCycle and Zumba and CrossFit and TRX and you name it. It's like, you know, you guys come all up with this stuff. And generally you come up in like either LA or New York, right? This is kind of, you know, where these things are basically originated. So we're sitting in the heart of like Beverly Hills at a barbecue and we're doing this thing that, you know, everybody in Germany was already doing and we loved it. and you guys are not having this here. So I was like, so there's the largest market in the world, which has significant health issues, like, you know, obesity issues, like, you know, um, healthcare issues, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but it's also like generally the early adopter market of these technologies. And you don't have this, like, this is crazy. Um, so um, I actually same year, quickly went. Uh, so after that, I went to Burning Man for 10 days, came back, and after three, 
three, four weeks, then I came back home and I was like, this is interesting. I really want to like, you know, keep going. So over the next two years, did all the research. Is it true? Does it make sense? Like, you know, what do we have to do to actually get into the market? And then finally decided to, you know, jump ship. Um, one of the, the very amazing things I have to say was that my wife and I together decided we're going to do this. And a year before actually I jumped, jumped ship, she quit her job. Um, she was a dental hygienist, went back to university, became a nutritionist and personal trainer and taught me all the stuff in the background that I actually needed to like, you know, jump into the fitness industry. And then a year later, I quit. Um, we found a catalyst. Um, a year later, moved to the US. And um, this is how it all started. Okay. And did you move to Seattle initially when you moved to the US or did you? Yes. So okay. it, it was it was kind of by accident. Um, I had a, a friend back in the days who was working at Microsoft and, you know, they were just dismantling their Microsoft band team. So they had a wearable division and they were um, dismantling that. And they said, you know, you know, we're interested. We really would love to like work with you. And I had done software before I have done like business before marketing aspects whatsoever, but I never did hardware. So know what you know, know what you don't know. Right. I was like, okay, I need some help with hardware. So here I was basically able to hire a team um, of hardware engineers directly out of Microsoft. Microsoft is in Redmond. Redmond is near to Seattle. So we moved to Seattle. Okay. Um, so that, that's, that, that covers your background and the inspiration for starting the company. But maybe let's, let's hit the pause button now. And w why don't you tell us, you know, what is EMS? And what comprises the Catalyst platform? So EMS stands for electro muscle stimulation training. Some of you guys might have stim before, like, you know, like in rehab. So basically where you put these sticky pads on like some body, body, uh, parts of your body and you basically like start to stimulate um, muscle tissue. Um, it's been used since the 60s. Um, the Russians actually came up with it. And once of a sudden we had uh, Russian sprinters at Olympic Games where there were no four years ago and people were like, where are those coming from? And, you know, they were basically finding out that you can like train much more efficiently um, with this kind of technology. And for those of you who have seen like Rocky Four, Ivan Drago with all these things and all the tech around him, that was kind of the time when it came up. Um, so um, electromuscle stimulation mimics the brain signal that your motoric nerves are sending to your muscles to contract. Um, and they basically amplify those signals and they can tell each part of the body specifically what to do. So basically what we're doing is, or what we have done is we put all of this into a suit. Um, and if you guys look at the website and, you know, I have my, you know, down in my name, I've like catalyst.fit, like you guys see pictures of that. Um, and basically what they do is they are mapped to the major muscle groups of your body. And while you're working out, you can do like a functional workout or you just like, you know, do a cardio workout whatsoever. We send signals that are basically the same as what your brain would send. And we basically intensify the muscle contractions specifically to each part of the body. So what's happening is you make your muscles work harder, but the biggest benefit is like we can do it um, without any joint impact because you don't have to lift anything. Um, you're not jumping around. Um, you don't have any injury risks around it, and we can do it in areas that are really, really hard to activate. So, for example, in my case, it was the lower back. Training the lower back is like super hard. Like I can't plank for hours or something like this, but we all have back issues because we're sitting all the time. Um, it's kind of like the, the biggest problem of our time. So what we now do is like, um, and, you know, if you've ever been to this gym, you get strapped into these devices and have to do these turns and so, but these turns are actually not good for your spine because the spine wasn't designed to do this all the time. So what we have now um, in electromuscle stimulation, we call this full body electromuscle stimulation, is we have the ability to train the human body in a way that didn't exist before, where we have all the positives of strength training and muscle training and cardio training without the negatives of joint impact, knee injuries, like, you know, hip problems and so on and so forth, and can do this in a very short amount of time. So when we say the sessions are 20 minutes, it's we only want you to like do strength trainings for that amount of time, because the time under tension for each muscle in that is 10 minutes, because you're basically going through an alternating set of um, impulses where you're basically 
flex your muscles for four seconds and then relax for another four seconds. So basically half of the 20 minutes you're under tension. If you go to the gym and try to replicate this, you need to take hours, like, you know, need to spend hours in the gym. You're doing biceps curls or you push whatsoever because you only do it to a certain muscle group at a time. So we are able now to train pro athletes all the way to people who are injured. And we can talk about the audience a little bit, you know, in a, in a bit. Um, and provide an actually working workout um, that you're going to feel directly after and like days after and maybe like, you know, Tom, you can talk to that because you've done it. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, and we're very happy to now solve, in our opinion, um, a lot of the fitness problems um, of our societies in today. Yep. And, and, and the suit comes with a vest. Yes. And shorts. Yes. And then and arm straps. Uh, and in and, and arm straps. Yes. And each of those has a sensor or a pad yes. that sends the EMS. I'm sure I'm mm -hmm. using the terms wrong. But in total, how many sensors are there between the arm pads, the vest, and the shorts? Uh, it's like 26 areas that are basically mapped to the human body. Um, and the reason why we have these three different parts is we wanted to design a system that everybody can use. So basically we have this modular system after you purchase, you get through a sizing process and we can then customize the components to everybody's body shape um, based on these measurements. And that allows us to train skinny supermodels to O-line center, you know, from uh, like both ends of the spectrum with all different types of body shapes um, and, you know, help them in their journey. And then there's also uh, a power pack. Yes. So what we did is we took the, so like the, the last generation, and this kind of takes us to like, you know, why Catalyst is so different from what has been existing, you know, over the last 15 years. So for context, full body el electromuscle stimulation training and pro athlete and, you know, personal training work has been around for 15 years. It's a very proven, you know, science and trainings program. But what we did is like we took a $20,000 device that's heavy and you can like, you know, need a huge suitcase to actually move it from A to B and it's wired and there are cables all over the place. And we, we put it into a very portable, very lightweight system. So the um, impulse pack is actually like, you know, a thick iPad, uh, uh, iPhone. So just from a form factor perspective and the suit is three pounds and you know, it's fully machine washable and, you know, all these kind of aspects. So basically we miniaturized a $20,000, 20 pound device into like a half a pound um, small pack. And the whole system now is the price of a Peloton basically, um, instead of like, you know, it's probably a 10th of the cost of what this, you know, technology was before. And we, we actually, love that because it makes it like much more affordable and mass um, applicable and you can travel with it which is also like a nice side effect yep i mean i, I uh, in full disclosure uh both uh, myself and my wife tina have one and it's very lightweight it's very easy to use it's very effective um in fact i think uh, uh i think uh, tina used it twice this morning and i i may call on her in a little bit to uh, provide some first-hand experience but um, to also kind of give everybody a sense for how this works. So you, you put it on and then you are basically being guided through a 20 minute or so workout routine by a trainer that's videotaped. So I'm watching this on my iPad and as I'm doing the exercises, I'm getting my muscles stimulated. Um, exactly. Am I explaining that correctly? Yeah, so what, what we needed to do, and this is actually an interesting, um, so one of the philosophies that, you know, we have at Catalyst and that I'm very holding dear to is with all problems that you have in life or challenges that you have to come over, especially like, you know, in, in you know, very bleeding edge um, areas is you have to define the problem well. Because if you don't define the problem well, whatever solution you're coming up with, like, doesn't actually, like, you know, meet it. And if you need one more than one sentence, like, you know, you don't know what your problem is. Um, so, like, really, really narrow it down. So, the challenges that we had in building this technology were first hardware problems, where it's, like, was big and expensive and you couldn't, you know, was not really usable and not really user friendly. But the other problem was, it's, like, the technology was so dumb 
that you always needed a human being playing DJ while the customer is dancing. This is kind of like the analogy I use. Like, you know, like you either DJ or you dance. You can't do both things at the same time. That doesn't work, right? Or like you do the, play the guitar and like dance, it also doesn't work at the same time. Yeah. So what we needed to do is we needed to figure out how to can or how to like scale the trainer role in this experience. And in, in today's world, in the old world, what happened is like the trainer stands beside you is telling you what to do and he's operating the system. Okay, so now we needed to like, you know, figure out how to do this and the IP that we actually created around this and, you know, um, jingle like, you know, with our friends over in Spokane, um, we, we actually um, film the trainer but the trainer it has prescripted all his workouts. He's basically following his own script. And while he's working out, he's training himself and he's making all the adjustments to his suit and to his system. These are all recorded, uploaded to the cloud, combined with the content, um, so with the video content. And when I, as the customer, am now basically following this video content, it gets personalized to myself. So basically, you know, I follow what he's doing, but if he's touching on the screen, he says like, hey, let's take it up a notch. You know, Tom, you know, we're taking yeah. it up a notch. Yeah. So, so it's a very, very immersive experience where I, as the customer, don't have to DJ, I'm just listening. And I'm just, you know, following these exercises, but it's also adapting my, um, my equipment so I don't need to deal with this. This was actually a big user experience challenge for us. How do I not, as the customer, have to constantly deal with the tech? How do I basically make it so easy that I can focus on myself? Yeah, and, and it is, I mean, from personal experience, it's, it's very, very seamless. Um, I actually might take a second here, and, and Tina, if you're listening, and Tina's my wife, you did two workouts this morning. Um, can you kind of describe the experience? Tina, you have to unmute yourself. On it. Am I here? Yes, you are. There you are. Describe your describe what you did this morning. Well, I suited up and I did a full body workout, and it's great. It kind of just goes through and increases as the time goes on. And I don't know. I was feeling very energetic this morning, so I went ahead and did a leg workout afterwards. Just because I hadn't done one before and it was hard. I was almost dead at the end of it, actually. <laughs> um, it, it, it's nice because it has this like pulsating. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's just like all your muscles contract and then you have a break and then you go in and you, you know, contract your muscles and this suit just contract makes them contract it's it's really strange if you had an ultrasound like on your knee or anything when they turn that thing up and you can feel that pulsating that's kind of what it feels like oh that I, that's my experience <laughs> perfect perfect well thanks tina um i mean it is amazing because you know the, the workouts themselves aren't all that strenuous but you really feel sore and like you got a good workout afterwards um you want to get, so, so, you know, I've, I've only done a handful of the workouts. How, how many choices does a user have? What, what, what different workout routines or links in time uh, are, are currently available? Yeah. So basically we support four modes of workouts. So we call them power, strength, um, cardio and relaxation. So basically, like, let's start with the last one. Like, you know, there's just a pulsing massage mode that I can do after a workout, which just increases blood flow and makes sure that, you know, lactic acids get, you know, flushed out and I can, you know, have nutrients being well distributed through the body. Um, we have a cardio mode, which is a, it's, kind of, it's literally like a, like a tremor or pulsa pulsating um, um, sensation. And what's basically happening is like, you know, you can point, you can either do it like with just the calisthenic mo movements that we have on the screen, or you can combine it with your treadmill. You can just walk on your treadmill. It's like very low impact, but because all the rest of your body is now like, you know, actively engaging and like, you know, also starting to burn calories, like your whole metabolism gets like totally up to a different thing as if you were running. 
but you do this without the knee impact and you do this without the hip impact and so on and so forth. Then we have a strength workout, which is like generally targeting type one muscle fibers, which is like, you know, the slow movement, but like, you know, um, holding muscles, so to say. And we have a, a power um, uh, training uh, mode, which um, from a frequency perspective, we can actually um, determine which kind of muscle fibers we are targeting. So the muscle has two types of muscle fibers, slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. And you know, for example, if you are like, you know, really running or boxing, but also if you're tripping and you need to quickly like react to something, you need your type two muscle fibers, but they are really, really hard to train normally just under extreme loads where you have a either lifting a lot or you have to run very fast where you have a high injury risk. So those four kind of modes do we support because we just change the frequencies of the impulses, which then have a different metabolic reaction. So those are the four modes we support. Um, I think we currently have like, you know, 38 different um, training um, activities that are like sometimes a shoulder training or like they're like a lower body focused ones and so on and so forth. And we're adding content all the time. Um, we were a little bit limited over the COVID times, like, you know, what we can do in terms of like, you know, coming together and shoot content. Um, but now we're like, you know, coming back up and there's going to be constantly more um, content. We are now also developing specific content for golf and for tennis and for like, you know, specific activities because all these different activities that you're doing normally um, basically have different demands. And for example, golfers are always very one sided because they always swing in one direction. So they always have a weak side and a strong side. So how are we making sure now that we basically balance out the body? And in your, your, you're suggesting that people do this just twice a week for 20 minutes? Yeah. So the strength training, we suggest twice a week. So if you, for example, just do like a 20 minute workout, full body workout, we recommend like, you know, we, we recommend 48 hours of recovery time between workouts because okay. you also, your body needs time to recover. The recovery is as important as the workout. Um, so you need to give time for your muscle. So in a workout, muscle fibers break. This is what you try to do. And when they break, they basically are being rebuilt um, as a stronger version of themselves. So after you are grown, like, you know, after nine months of like, after you were born, you don't grow new muscle fibers. You basically have a set amount of muscle fibers. So if you have a bigger muscle or a smaller muscle, it's still the same amount of fibers. It's just stronger ones and bigger ones based on, you know, your training. So when you do a strength training or a speed training, a power training with catalyst, um, you break some of these down and you need to give them time to basically recover, which we call super compensation and strength training. Like, you know, so you basically want to give these 48 hours to your stronger self and then put the new workout on it, which then like, you know, gets you to the next level and to the next level and to the next level. So we recommend 48 hours in between 48 to 72, which gives you three to two, two to three workouts. Um, the cardio you can do all the time. So I generally, when I'm already in the suit, you know, I do a very hard strength training, go for it. And then afterwards I do a cardio session, which helps me with blood flow and helps me with like general, you know, exhaustion that I'm really, really done afterwards. Um, but uh, you can technically do the cardio sessions every day and we have customers who actually do that. Okay. Um, and and what, what, um, what feedback are you getting from users about the benefit of their catalyst workouts? So the, the first thing is like, they really say, I feel better. That's the most important thing. They immediately feel better because, so first of all, they feel accomplished after a workout um, because you have this soreness for a certain amount of days and you know you did it because of a good thing that you did, not because you were lazy. Like, you know, my back pain, for example, was because I didn't do anything. Like once of a sudden, like when I'm reaching out and when I'm, like I'm like I'm still sore from a workout two days ago, right? So because like if I'm stretching my pecs a bit, I'm like so they feel accomplished. This is one of the things um, they um, they gain muscle mass again. They gain stability. Um, the biggest advantage what they what they feel first is like arms and glutes, which is like generally something that we are weak on. Um, what they then feel about like two to three weeks is like core strength is like where they really improve a lot, like lower back, abs, you know, which helps you with a lot of you know, with a lot of activities, because if we think about it, whenever we lift something, we grab it. 
And so basically our arms are connected through our core to our legs because like this is basically where we put all the weight on. So the core strength is like something that people really feel every time. And then they say like, you know, hey, with general day to day activities, I just feel better. Um, the athlete type of customers, they are just saying like, you know, my nervous system is more attuned. Like, you know, I'm just like, you know, more, you know, I, I just build a better connection with my body in general. Um, they see speed increases. This is the big thing where we really help, like, you know, uh, agility and speed. Um, but general, it's, it's, I feel stronger um, and I, I feel more balanced in general because, you know, all the small muscles now once of a sudden get worked yeah. out and I, I haven't done that before. One thing I found is I got, I got sore in places where I've never been sore before from working out. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to explain that, but it, it clearly communicated to me it was working muscles that weren't otherwise getting worked. Yeah, no, 100%. And this is exactly the big benefit of this. Like, there's no cheating. And like, I sometimes say, like, we leave no muscle behind. It's like literally um, what this is, because, you know, even if we go to the gym, we all have our favorite activities that we do all the time. And then we have the ones that we don't like. Yeah. So it's like this one makes sure we are really working out the whole body. And because we're working out the whole body and we're giving a certain load to all the muscles, the weakest ones get worked out the most, yeah. they get sore and they then catch up with the rest and we become just a much more balanced body in general. Yep. Yep. Well, now, now that we've, you've kind of given us a, a comprehensive understanding of the suit and how it works, let's just kind of transition a bit to your business model. And you, mm -hmm. you kind of said early on that this was quite uh, prevalent in Germany and in Europe. And I think reading through your materials, there's like 13,000 EMS studios uh, doing you know, 1.5 billion in revenue, but you've chosen the home fitness market. Um, kind of tell us about your business model and yeah. and why you focused on the home market and and are, are are you the first one that's doing that? Yes. So so absolutely. So for context, full body MS training, a twenty thousand dollar device. You know, personal trainer buys two, puts them in a studio, trains two people at a time. Exists all over the world, but the United States. Um, the reason for that is in the United States, the, uh, the FDA regulates powered muscle stimulators as a medical device. Um, so all these European companies, they were serving the rest of the world and were just, we're happy here. Why should we go to America? You get sued when you spill. Um, you get sp um, sued when you spill coffee. I don't want to go there. And like, I have to go through this whole FDA thing. Um, why should I bother? So they basically grew the market in the rest of the world. Um, we also started in studios because it was the only thing that we could get through the FDA in the first place. So we basically started in studios, but it was always clear. And when we talked to customers in the first place that they said, can I do this at home? And the biggest thing for me, and, and this is kind of like, you know, how I measure success is um, when I started Catalyst, I said, you know, I want the CDC to say it made a dent into the statistics. So if the CDC says like, you know, what you did changed the statistics, okay, now we're relevant. This is how I think, you know, if we don't achieve that, we have undershot our, our potential here. Like we have a tool that really works and that can help millions of people. If we don't scale it to a point that we can make a dent into the statistics, we haven't scaled it enough. So if you now think you have to run studios, um, A, what you're doing is you're serving LA, New York, Miami, and maybe Chicago. And like, if you don't live there, like, okay, that's your problem. I didn't want a product like this. I wanted a product where people can say, I want this, I can get it. So this was really my driver around this because otherwise you're totally limited to real estate in certain areas, so on and so forth. That was by the way, long before COVID hit. Now I'm like, I never want to be in the like, you know, real estate studio business again, because I think, you know, everything is like, you know, home fitness in general, but the driver for us was less a business driver. It was more a, in order for us to be successful and to really change people's lives, we need to put it into the hands of people. And this is why we said like, we have to figure out how to do this at home. Okay. 
And we've had a couple of questions in here. Um, mm -hmm. What is the price of a suit? Mm -hmm. And is there a monthly subscription? Yeah, so um, the price of the system is $2,385. If you affirm is it's like $95 if you affirm that and, and finance that. Um, there's an optional subscription um, down the road. At the moment, there is none. So at the moment, you know, early adopters whatsoever, we're not charging a subscription. Um, you can use the system without the subscription at any point in time. However, in the future, we're going to, you know, build, you know, more live classes or like, you know, more content and analytics and whatsoever. And for that, we're going to charge an extra subscription similar to a Peloton, a Tonal, a Mirror, like, you know, you name it, like all these home um, smart home fitness solutions. Okay. And uh, we had one question here from uh, Marianne Lesage, and she asked, um, can two people use the same suit? Um, if you are the same size, yes. Um, so if you're significantly different in size, then what we do is like, you know, the tech, so the impulse pack and whatsoever that can be shared, you know, you can share an iPad and so on and so forth. And everybody gets his own suit components or textile component, uh, which is $900. So basically, if you are a couple or like if you're like a bunch of friends who basically want to share this, you basically share the expensive parts and then the personal parts that you wear on your body and you're sweating into um, that those are yours. So in the Peloton example, I would say everybody has its own shoes and its own pants and its own stuff, but like you're sharing the same bike that's similar to us, where you share the iPad and the impulse pack and whatsoever and the suit component is personal. If you are the same size, you can theoretically even share that. Okay. We have a question here from Jesse Johnson. Jesse, fire away. Yeah, thanks, Tom. So I guess I was just wondering, now that we know the price, um, I see the website has it waitlisted so that we can stay updated. When's it going to market? Um, maybe where is it being produced and at what volumes? Um, and then yeah. are you ever targeting any of the trainers as well? I guess would be all in one. So um, we were starting to sell earlier this year and we basically sold out twice um so this is why we're now back to a wait list um we have limited release so once you sign up you basically get into a to a cadence and you can say like hey i want to actually purchase one and then there's a backlog and this is currently like where we are um we we started shipping um, with a closed beta in October, September, October last year, um, and did like larger releases as of like February this year. Um, can't talk about quantities, like really, it's like currently very limited release, like um, like in three digits a month, you know, units. Um, like we can't fully scale at this moment, so we're currently scaling up the supply chain. Um, we are producing in three different locations. Um, so the longest um, relationship we have with a group in Austria, which produces in Poland, um, they produce the base layers, um, which is basically the, the underwear that you wear underneath it. It's kind of like 3D printing for textiles, so to say. Um, so make it very form fitting. And, you know, we needed to basically develop a um, a garment that has kind of like the opposite of what you want, because like, you know, you want good connectivity and water and keep the sweat and whatsoever to the skin where you when you normally develop something you want it to be, you know, taken away so that you don't cool out. So we needed to like, you know, start from scratch. Um, the suits we are producing in China um, with a company that builds for Arcteryx and for like, you know, Montclair, like, you know, all these kind of companies and um, the uh, electronics we try to manufacture in the United States, especially under COVID times. Um, unfortunately, that was difficult um, and we ran into quality issues at some point in time. Um, so now we're going to Taiwan and, uh, you know, we're mass scaling over there on the electronics part. And then there are they are they shipped to the customer from those separate locations or are they all shipped and then packaged to Spokane to Seattle, I mean. Yeah, so at the moment we are um, shipping everything to Seattle and then like in Seattle, they're basically kitted together based on the sizing of each individual customer. Um, and uh, yeah, and then they get shipped to the customer, exactly. Okay, and, and, and in a very elegant box, I might add. Um, yeah, people gave us a lot of credits on the, um, on the packaging. They were more like, you know, I gave myself a Louis Vuitton bag gift or something like this, like this, those were the analogies. and. 
it's like even even a, a Nike executive said like you're doing such a good job on this and I was like okay that's uh I take that compliment yeah, it, it's beautiful Ryan you had a question yes thank you um so this is coming from a, a personal experience here as somebody that lost out on on my quote young man dreams from a herniated disc and, and frankly I continue to leave a, a lead a life that's controlled by lower back pain have you tested this against lower back pain, herniated discs? What kind of results are you seeing? Uh, and if it's good, when can I get one of these? Because that would change my life. Yes. So um, we have long-term studies out of Germany. And so for context, because it's been around for 15 years in Germany, there are like two universities, one in Cologne, one in Nuremberg, which have like a chair of physical medicine. And they have been like, going through like, you know, EMS training for like years. And what they basically found is like 86% of people who've been using full body EMS training for more than two months, um, basically reported no or significantly reduced pain, uh, or no more or significantly reduced pain. So the it's become the lower back pain treatment in Europe, the de facto self prescribed treatment. Um, for me, it's exactly that. I never went through surgery. Um, and um, to your second question, if you want one, sign up to the wait list and uh, you know, shoot me a uh, shoot me a a message here on the Slack, and I can see if I can like pull the things a little bit forward. Thank you, TJ. You had a question about kind of uh, the time to market. Can you ask? You want yeah. to ask? Yeah, I'm always fascinated by people who are, you know, starting companies and sort of doing that diligence. So you mentioned sort of a two-year process where you were uh, evaluating the market and that sort of thing. So I guess a way to to target the question would be, what did you learn in that process that you would give as advice to somebody who is thinking about their own product development? Yeah, very cool question. So first of all, um, we needed to define the problem, like I said earlier. So what's the problem statement here? So we needed to build a product that can pass the FDA process. Um, so that was really the thing. So, okay, what are they regulating and what are they looking for? And you know, how difficult is it? What will it cost? How much time will it take? And how do we have to design the product? That's what, that was the first thing. Like, you know, is it even feasible at all? Um, the next thing was um, I actually took a device to the US and I did market testing. I gave it to basically like a literally true story in 2013, I rented a room in the Beverly Wilshire and I invited 20 of my friends from the area and I said, I have something new. I want to put it on you and I want to try it out and you're going to give me feedback. Because what I needed to understand is like, you know, I can build this and I can ship this, but will Americans buy this? This was my other topic. Like, you know, always know your customer and like test as early as possible, like test with them as soon as you can. So they all did it and said, this is weird. I love this training. I hate the suit because I want my own. So this was like the feedback that I got immediately. So even in 2013, like long before I did it, people already told me, can I do this at home? And I want my own suit. I don't want to share it with anybody else. So it's like, do this as early as possible and like find out what it is. And we knew, okay, we can only do it in studio. I totally get it. But what do we do in that phase to quickly go to the next phase? So for example, we then decided or like we, we said, like the system has to be quantified so that we learn what to put into an algorithm to like replace the trainer. So it's kind of like what Tesla has done with their cars, like put the cameras all in so that you create miles and you create information so that you then later can build a self-driving system. So we identified all these. I also said, well, who do I need from a team perspective? Um, so for example, um, our lead trainer and, you know, the the person probably with the most EMS experience in the company is actually a German that was my trainer back in the days. And I basically asked him like, are you going to come with me to America? And you know, him and his wife have basically packed their suitcases and basically come over, came over to America because we have to build this from scratch. So it's really like, what are your customers doing? What are the resources and what are the challenges? But most importantly, at most importantly, are you really passionate about this thing? Like, are you really passionate about it? Because there are gonna come really dark times, really, really dark times where you're exhausted and you're stressed and the world is against you and you run out of everything. And if you then still wanna do it, then you're gonna survive because otherwise you're gonna give up. 
So you need to find out, do you really want to do this? Um, yeah, I think that's, that's almost the most important thing Absolutely. Um, because you're going to put your life on it. Literally. It's like, you know, being a founder and like doing something, especially on a different continent. It's like, yeah, like we're basically saying no one is coming. Like you're jumping behind enemy lines and like, no one is coming. You have to figure this out. It's literally what it is. So find out if you're really passionate about it. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you. Uh, Bruce Pym, you had a question. Yeah, I was just trying to tie this in with the uh, people going through various rehabilitation following surgery or uh, injury, the kind of physical therapy people do. Is this complementary to that? Yes, very much so. So um, we are a medical device. However, we are currently cleared only for like training purposes. We're not a rehab device. We're not like a, you know, a medical treatment device. So for example, if you had an injury, like, you know, immediately, like the next six weeks or whatsoever, like, you know, you wouldn't use this afterwards to really come back to a certain, you know, level of performance. This is where we really shine and where we really come in. We are working with an organization uh, down in Dallas, Texas called ATF, uh, Adaptive Training Foundation. They are a team um, that works with um, professional athletes and adaptive athletes alike. And we see crazy results with, you know, very injured individuals. Um, so they, for, for example, we had a quadriplegic who couldn't lift his arms more than 45 degrees and sits in a wheelchair. After nine weeks of catalyst, like he's doing battle ropes. It's like, you know, the CrossFit battle ropes and he's walking in a stroller. So it's, it's just mind blowing. And I always get teary when I hear that because it's like, those are the stories why we really get up every morning. Um, so in rehab, um, postpartum, like, you know, all these like, you know, moments where, you know, you weren't able to do certain things for a long period of time. This is where we really shine. I had my own knee surgery five years ago, six years ago. And um, I kept using EMS training in a standing position, like not loading the leg, not moving, um, you know, for the time that I was basically in crutches and it prevented my atrophy. Um, so it totally prevented atrophy. So my, because we are still working the muscles, so they don't basically like fade away. Um, my physician looked at me like four weeks after surgery and he asked me, which leg did we operate on? Because he couldn't tell. And, and he was like, this is weird because it was just like atroscopy. So you couldn't like really see the, the scars and because none of it atrophied. Um, yeah. So down the road. Um, we're probably also going to get a, um, a medical treatment certification, um, you know, to, you know, roll this out with doctors, but <laughs> doctors can already use it um, as they like with their patients, but it needs to be under the supervision of a physician. Thank you. Got it. Um, kind of transitioning here. Who, who do you perceive as your competition? That's a good question. Um, the one that I'm scared about is the one that I don't know. <laughs> good answer. The one that I don't and that I don't know that exists. Yeah. Everyone that exists is not a competition. Um, so with a peloton, I can't move. And if you had a knee surgery, you can't use it. Uh, a tonal costs twice as much as we, and you also can't travel with it. A rowing machine is for people who like rowing. Um, <clears throat> and basically for everyone over a certain period of age or whatsoever, like they only have us and all the pro athletes already have all the other things. So we are the only new thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, uh, and I'm not afraid of any of the other EMS players, I have to say, like, and I'm also not afraid of the pre-core of this world. And by the way, I think they now belong to Peloton anyway. So yeah. that's a different thing. Uh, it, it shouldn't sound arrogant, but I think we have quite a big leap um, and we've, quite unique in what we're doing. Um, probably someone in China is already starting to copy us and they can do this in the rest of the world, probably not in the US. Um, and then, you know, maybe some of our IP is going to um, protect us. Um, no, so I think we don't really have a competition topic. Um, okay. What we more have is a how do we educate the market? And if we're gonna, if we're gonna fail, it's because we got something wrong. It's mm -hmm. like, we are going to make this fail or succeed and we can never blame it on anybody else. That's, uh, yep. that's really how we look at it within the company. 
Yeah. Well, the concept isn't going to go away with the number of studios around the world and the, the and the demonstrated efficacy. It's not going away. And on the topic of intellectual property, you have a number of patents, I, I recall. It's yes. Yeah. So so basically, like what I looked at um, really was like, what's really the new piece? It's like so the EMS science in itself, it's not new. It's kind of like. Apple didn't do anything new on a cell phone in terms of like how it talks to the radio tower. It's like, there's no difference in that. Yeah. So what we basically have most of our IP around is about the user interaction, the data piece, like, you know, how do I basically operate this? Um, how do we reduce like 11 buttons to two? And how did we like, you know, get a training without you ever having to touch the device um, after mm -hmm. you basically hit start? Um, this is like a lot of stuff that we have IP around, a little bit around the design of the hardware. Um, but that's really where the moat is. Like, if you want to copy the thing, be my guest. If you want to have the same experience, that's a different topic. Okay. How many total patents or patents pending? 11. 11. Impressive. Um, you know, in the remaining minutes we have here, um, obviously a nut, another very important component of the success of the business is company culture. Um, can you know? Can, can you kind of talk about uh, you know where you view view company culture as a um, as an essential ingredient to success, and 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 maybe talk a little bit about the culture that you're you're putting together at Catalyst. Yeah. I it's actually, I think it's almost the most important um, topic, um, especially if you're doing bleeding edge, cutting edge stuff. Um, so there's the, there's the whole notion generally about the, you know, fail fast and so on and so forth. And we, we heard it a million times. Um, I, I truly believe that you need to focus on learning um, and understanding the problems first, but on learning um, because our knowledge is like deprecated so fast is like, you know, it's outdated so quickly. Um, we need to be hungry and like look for original solutions. Um, and um, I'm just, I'm just using an example um, that we actually had as an, as a, as a topic, you know, during the, during the design of the home experience, we <clears throat> we knew that we wanted to have the trainer on the screen and how we had the settings or whatsoever. But if I, as a customer, wanted to like make a change, we knew like you know stepping forward regularly, you know having to touch the device, going back, what's that was not a good experience. So what we were okay with was a a lesser solution in the meantime. And basically what we thought, like, we're going to build two sticks and have a button on it. So we were totally okay saying like, it's not the perfect solution. And we know it's not going to be like, and we have to build more hardware, which we didn't want to and so on and so forth. But for the meantime, we gave ourselves the grace to say like, Hey, it's a good enough solution. And we are going to go for it and, and we're going to fix it later. However, when then someone else said, you know, I have a better idea, like the better idea has to come from everywhere. Like, you know, it has to be able to like, if it comes from the marketing people and the hardware people say like, but like you're doing marketing, you're not doing hardware. It's like, you have to be fluent amongst the different, you know, organizational parts because you're learning something. You have an opportunity to learn something. Um, we have three values in the company. Um, the first one is understand, um, which I'm coming back to all the time. It's like, you really have to understand the problem. You have to understand your customer. You have to understand your environment to really, really come up with a good solution. Um, the second one is care. Um, like we care about our customer, ourselves, but we also care for the details, right? So attention to detail is also like really, really matters and for quality and, you know, for details. We shipped a, with a 14 people team, we shipped a piece of hardware, like three pieces of hardware that have never been built before and an app and a streaming software into the open market where everybody is just doing with it, whatever they want to do. Like we have no control over the environment and it doesn't break. So we're like, because the details really mattered. And then last but not least, this is like the third one is like lead and lead for us is 
we lead by example because like we ask everyone within the team is like you know if you want something to change then be the change like you know show us how to do it and and it's a real empowered um framework because i think only then you can be fast enough and adapt fast enough um i have to say um without any any examples some companies breed the opposite culture um they become they breed hubris where it's like you know i've been at company xyz we know how we do this like we've been doing this for 20 years we know how this gets done whatsoever and then you get in a certain direction and no, you don't. I mean, yeah. I always use the examples like the, the AT&Ts and the Deutsche Telekoms of this world, they didn't invent WhatsApp, right? And Hilton didn't invent like Airbnb and, and so on and so forth. So you have to encourage saying like, you know, let's, let's take the best learnings and learnings are always good, but let's always challenge ourselves and like, you know, come up with original solutions. And it starts with understanding the problem. Yep. And, and where did those three values come from? Understand, care, and lead. Was that a team effort or how, how, did, how did you arrive at those three values? It was a team effort. Um, but I have to say, um, the, the understand and the learn piece is, you know, is what I was like really, really passionate about together yeah. with the care. Then the, you know, we have like more like that goes down the road, but I have an interview question, um, which I always ask people, which is like, if you were a superhero, what would be your superpower? <laughs> and mine is learning. You okay. know, I just like solve problems faster than everyone else. And like, you know, not everyone else. Right. I mean, there are just awesome people out there, but at least of the people that, you know, I, I perceive this as my superpower and I think you have to know your superpower and uh, encouraging people to really like drill down on problems and learn and understand that was um, important to me. The, the care, um, we're a very human team. It's like, you know, it's like customers come like always first and we never like really top down like ever instilled that we just like live it every day. And it's like, you know, yeah people get up on the weekends and at night and just like answer emails and like it was never managed expectations it was just happens it's like people just you know love to do this um and uh the process was actually like it's quite difficult to like distill something down so that we have a word and like one sentence and like and so on and so forth and can print a t-shirt if you like um but that's a that's always a team effort and i i really encourage that because otherwise it's hollow and like you know three people like the values and no one else is really using them um the the challenge really is like how do you build rituals within a team that basically like you know have them surface over and over and over again um those those really matter okay I, i'm a big fan of learning too and constantly learning particularly as it comes to you know um disruptive emerging companies and one of my favorite expressions is if you don't like change you'll like irrelevancy even less um, yeah. so you've got to learn and got to, uh, got to constantly evolve and adapt. Um, but only we're running out of time here and I, I kind of, I have many more questions, but I just kind of want to conclude on this one since we're short is, um, you recently closed to financing, um, and you know, what, what can you tell us about that? And, um, and I, I know there was, uh, you know, some level of participation from investors in both Spokane and Coeur d'Alene and, um, yeah, can, can you highlight that a little bit. Yeah, so um, we closed a set of like saves, safe notes. Like we don't didn't close the price round yet. Um, so what we what we're using is the the Y Combinator um, standard um, agreement for future equity, um, which is a a methodology that has emerged. I think like four five five years ago, four years ago, something like that, out of Y Combinator, and um, I highly recommend it because it lowers the the need for um, paperwork, you know, upfront. It makes it easy to like, you know, close with an individual investors. Um, it's not debt for the company, which is like a, a downside for the investor. Like, you know, sorry to say that, but you know, it's not debt. It's basically equity, um, but it's a very manageable um, yeah. process. And uh, it's a very, even like if you're very, very early in your stage, um, taking like 50,000 here or 20,000 there or 100,000 there um, based on a two, three page 
three page uh, piece of paper um, allows you to get running with a um, with a team or with like a mini you know uh, project um, without that the you know large law firms basically like you know charge you like a lot, lot of amount of money um, yeah we have a, a quite long history in the in the Pacific Northwest um, in CDA and, and and in Spokane um, I think in total there are like probably 10 individuals that are involved in Catalyst over the years. Um, we actually um, drove out in 2016 um, out to Coeur d'Alene. We uh, participated in an event which is called Think Big, is like, you know, operated by the Innovation Collective up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And we knew Nick Smoot um, from a conference in Berlin, Germany, like a few years earlier. So he was inviting us over that like, you have guys have an interesting you know, product, let's speak. And, you know, I spoke uh, at that conference. And then two years later, um, we came back and basically showcased what we did as a, as a, you know, from a product perspective. And just recently in March, we did another pop up over there, basically showing the community, like, you know, what Catalyst can do. Uh, a lot of people tried it. And uh, a lot of people like became customers. So we're, we're we have a long standing history, um, you know, up there. It's um, for me, it's now up there because I moved to Las Vegas. Um, you know, we're building our logistics center down here because it's like just from a logistics perspective, like a really, really good place to be. So now I'm not saying like over there anymore because I used to live in Seattle. Now I say up there. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, I, I, I know uh, I'm delighted to be uh, uh, an investor in the company, also delighted to be a user of your product. Um, and I'm sure both will provide tremendous rewards over the years. Um, but it is a few minutes after one, so we need to conclude. Um, really, really appreciate uh, your participation today and, and hope everybody uh, on the phone uh, enjoyed it as well. One final note, we have our next Ignite Talks on um, June 17th. Uh, featuring Dave Curry, who has been involved in several companies here in Spokane, including Worldwide Packets, Demand Energy, and most recently Carbon Quest. And I'm also delighted to announce that that one will be an in-person Ignite Talks. It'll be in the evening at the steam plant. So uh, be looking for an invitation for that. But with that, we'll conclude. And uh, again, thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. So um, if you guys have any individual follow up questions, um, you know, email me or like, you know, just text me on LinkedIn or something like that. Um, yeah, I see some of you guys like, you know, sent me direct messages. Um, I don't know how to like reach out back to you because I don't have your email addresses. So I think LinkedIn probably is the best place to or, go. Or if anybody on the call that has a, a, a question or wants to learn more, feel free to reach out to me and uh, I will uh, connect you with Bjorn. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks thank everyone. You everybody. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you.